Okay, okay. Because, um, you know, with rain and stuff, it's very good, high likely that it went out <laughs> sometime during the week. And, uh, I mean, that's, almost, that's a given around here. Okay. Expedition Church is now live. Now, uh, we were broadcast to be talking. Okay. I'm glad I, glad I didn't say anything like, I shouldn't have said, like, people out there are idiots or something. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Uh, welcome to Wednesday night Bible study. Are we on yet? Hot, hot, gone. All right. Welcome to Wednesday night Bible study here at Expedition Church of the Triad, living where we're living a life of victory forged by faith. Where we're winning people to Jesus and bringing them in and discipling them and growing them up in Christ. Amen. From every generation, out of every people and tongue and nation. Hallelujah. We have to reach every generation. Um, you know, uh, not just the young generation, but the older generation, the mid generation, the about to kick it in the bucket generation. <laughs> All right. You know, um, we heard a statistic recently that said that, you know, if 67% of people aren't saved before they're 18, they don't get saved. And I think we got to change that. I think we got to change that. We can't just, you know, go, well, let's go focus on the 18 year olds and unders and get them saved and forget all the millions of people out there that are over 18 on this planet. Hallelujah. And uh, did we just lose that? that? Oh, okay. All right. Thought, I thought my red light was just on. So, Ladies and gentlemen, drum roll. Tonight is the last lesson from the Bible in the light of our redemption by E.W. Kenyon. Hallelujah. This finishes, this will conclude what we started a year ago. Maybe a little bit more than a year ago. Well, about a year ago. It's only 37 lessons, 52 weeks. Miss here and there. A couple services here and there that went more than one week. Um, but we're, we're finishing up about a, about a year's worth. We've been on this and, um, <clears throat> the, um, the youth are like ramping up to have way too much fun. I said, well, I mean, again, I don't guess they can have too much fun, but <laughs> too much fun for us with the doors open. How about that? All right. So um, last week we started in on two kinds of knowledge, and we, we focused on fallen man becoming a creature governed by his um, natural senses, that his natural senses became, became the um, main import of information by which he judged the world that he lived in. And... Um, being spiritually darkened and spiritually cut off from God, he no longer received information about God through his spirit, which was the highest form of man. Man is a spirit, possesses a soul, lives in a body. 2 Thessalonians 5.23 declares, I pray, God, that your whole spirit, soul, and body, and again, the Greek words there are pneuma, suke, and... Um, Carne, uh, be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, not 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 carne, but soma, soma, soma. Carne is for carnal or fleshly. Um, we're referring as an adjective. Um, the soma, so the suke, the numa, and the soma, the spirit, soul, and body of man. Man is a spirit. God is a spirit. God created man in His likeness, after His image, and after His kind. And so man was created, um, the book of Reve uh, Genesis says, um, and man became a living soul. God breathed in him the breath of life. He became a living soul in the King James Bible. Uh, deeper study beyond that in, in uh, different translations and uh, Hebrew uh, reveals that he actually, actually says more clearly in, in our language today, 
became a speaking spirit. He breathed in him the breath of life, and he became a speaking spirit. So, man created in the class of God as a spirit being, in communion with God, in contact with God, although he possessed a physical body and was the God of this world, the under ruler of God himself over earth and everything on it, at the fall, his connection to God's spirit was cut off and he became spiritually dead and aligned in spiritual relationship with Satan where Jesus said, ye are of your father, the devil, in John 8, 44, and the lust of your father you will fulfill. Okay? He was a murderer from the beginning. <laughs> yeah. And people wonder how people can do things they do. Well, when, when you're not aligned with God, when you are not born of God, when you are uh, in union with Satan, evil is resident within you. Okay? You are, you are aligned with Satan, okay? He was a murderer from the beginning, abode not in the truth. There's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own. He's a liar and the father of it. So, uh, as man's darkness, as darkness overtook his spirit being, he became a flesh-ruled being and began to use his senses to determine all information. We covered that last week. His sight, his smell, his taste, his touch, his hearing, all became the access into his suke, the soul, the mind. And there man began to formulate his opinion, his thoughts, his analysis of everything based on partial information. We mean partial. The spirit wasn't included. So the higher realm of existence was excluded from man's experiential knowledge from his senses. And with nothing to base that on, he began to formulate things like the theory of evolution. It is not fact. It is not proven. It is a theory. Now, if you go to school textbooks and pick them up, it's, it's taught as if it were absolutely the gospel truth, and, there, and anybody denying it is, is a science denier and all this, a lunatic and all this. It's a theory made up in the mind of man, okay? Um, all this dating of, you know, billions of years of, you know, whatever, is all based on tools and measurements that man created. Carbon dating and this and that. All created by man. Hello. I remember listening to a weatherman about, uh, about 30 years ago. He said, we can't accurately predict weather more than three hours in advance. But we're going to tell you what was on walking around the earth four billion years ago. They can't predict a hurricane. Y'all have seen it. It looks like a plate of spaghetti when it first starts out there in the Atlantic. You know, you got 32 models or 37 models, I forgot how many it is, um, that they use from around the world. And they all, be, and why, why are they all different? Because men in their mind, in their thinking, programmed it based on what they think it how it should interpret the data so it's still man-made now whether the earth is 400 million years old or 4,000 years old is it going to matter in relevance to what we're doing today but what I'm saying is because man's connection to God and the eternal spirit has been cut off, he determines all of this and makes stuff up. Or cr And y'all know this. Studies show who paid for the study. Because whoever paid for the study is the one looking for the results from the study. 
and they're, they're, you know, climate change is a prime example. They're, they're giving them data to keep getting funding to study climate change because if they give them a different narrative than they want, they'll cut off the data, the funding. And all these people who are making money off of climate change will be out of a job. So you got to take, just like presidential polls, you got to take them. Who put the who put the poll out there? What was the sample group? We we surveyed eight hundred and forty three people, out of two, uh, what two hundred million eligible voters. You've determined with eight hundred and forty three people, who's going to win. But we act like it's the truth. But then you got to go. How is the sampling done? Who did they oversample? Because they can they can get any any result they want at any time on any survey. So what, what I'm saying, man began to create um, sciences that did they did science didn't lead them to conclusion. They led science to a conclusion. Okay, because it fit their narrative. Because, because they can't communicate and contact God in the realm of the spirit, he must not exist. It must be mythological, must be fairy tales, and they have to come up with an explanation for it. And so they do, they come up with explanations. Okay? Evolution, and we're talking about, you know, um, we're not talking about microevolution where you know, you adapt to the cold weather here or the warm weather there. We're talking about cross-species evolution. Okay? Everything coming from one amoeba that happened to get a spark of life 300 billion years ago. And everything on the planet evolved out of that. Okay? You know? And all the variety of uh, animal life Biological life on the planet came from that one little single cell. The fact that it survived long enough to do to do all that's a miracle. If the conditions were the way they said they were when it happened. Okay. But this is all because of fallen man. Because of fallen nature, because of the sense rule. Now, so that was the one kind of knowledge. That kind of knowledge cannot lead you to God. Very interesting scripture. I, I believe John makes it. <laughs> Been called out right here in church. Don't you love it when your phone does something in church? <laughs> they had a meme up the other day that said, um, the pastor's not really upset that Bob's phone went off there in church. He's upset that when it went off, it was playing Highway to Hell by ACDC. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. All righty. He said hell. Yeah, I said hell in church because that's a real place. Oh, my. I, I grew up. Siri's about to tell me about hell. <laughs> Oh, my. We already know about it. We found out how not to go there. Okay. Um, our senses can't bring us to God. And, and like I was going to say, I think I believe John said this. He said, though we know him after the flesh, henceforth know we know him, know we him no more after the flesh. In other words, they walked with him in the natural when he was on the earth. And they did know him after the flesh in his earthly walk. Are you looking for that? There we go. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now, henceforth, know we him no more. What? Implying after the flesh. See, when he walked the earth, Paul, okay, Paul wrote it. I'm sorry. I don't know why I thought John did that. When, they walk, when he walked the earth, they knew him in the, in the natural. They ate with him. They walked with him. They slept in the you know, they, they all slept together in the same area. They, they um, 
uh, were in the boat together. They saw the miracles together. And which is why they even ask him, uh, will thou at will thou this time restore thy kingdom? They kept thinking it was a natural kingdom. But after the resurrection, ascension, and seating, Paul writes, says, we know him no more after the flesh. That's not how we know him. How do we know him? It's that second kind of knowledge. We come to know him through revelation knowledge. There is a revealing of Christ to the heart of man. Now, you can choose to believe or not to believe, which is why we're told to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And let me say this. Every creature means every creature. There's not an age, there's not an age constraint. Every creature. <coughs> Amen. Now, maybe more people get saved when they're younger than when they're older, but we cannot forego preaching to the older people. Amen. And maybe it's unusual. And that's because they've, they've, they've hardened their hearts. But I also know that when revival comes, when the anointing is poured out, when people with the power of God's manifestation, it breaks through all kinds of stuff. I said it breaks through all kinds of stuff. All right. And so um, this, this different knowledge, um, why did I have this in him? Well, I don't, I'm not even using his stuff. Okay. Kind of. Um, where, what, what was I going to, I was going to quote something. One of the Gospels. Lord, help me. Oh. Find that passage, Bill, where um, Jesus asked to, uh, the disciples, who, who do men say that I am? Well, some say that thou are uh, Elias. Some say, you know, Moses. Some say uh, one of the prophets brought back. But then he says this. He said, but whom do you, do you say that I am? And Peter stands up. I mean, you just got to love Peter. I mean, he was willing to put his neck on the line, even if he was wrong. And he was wrong more than once. Okay? He said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Amen? And Jesus looks at him and goes, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto thee. Okay, about Mark 8, okay. But my Father, which is in heaven, hath revealed this unto thee. Amen? And I say it, let me see here, if we, if we got all this in this same passage here. Make sure we're not having, I'm not quoting two different Gospels at the same time. So there are the Christ. And he charged it. No, 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 no. Okay, that's not one. Let's look here. Um, let's see what the um, the margin says here. John the Baptist. Look at Mark 16, maybe. Yeah, Mark, it's Mark's gospel, 16. So some say, you know, uh, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, others Jeremiah, one of the prophets. So you got John the Baptist, you got Elijah. Um, Elisha, and you got Jeremiah, okay, the Greek forms of the names. Whom do you say that I am? Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, Thou art Peter, Petros, a pebble, stony, a rock, okay? And upon this rock, Petra, the boulder, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail 
against it. Now, Jesus wasn't making Peter the head of the church. Okay? Two different Greek words with, two di with one meaning, you're a pebble, you're a stone. The other meaning, a boulder. <laughs> so if he's not building it on Peter, what is he building it on? Go back up. Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this to thee. Your senses can't reveal this to you. He did not get this because he'd eaten dinner with Jesus. Okay? Sense knowledge cannot produce what happened here. My but flesh and blood hath not revealed unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. Hallelujah. So this revealing of the Christ, the Son of God, came by supernatural revelation. And now Jesus turns and tells Peter, you're, you're strong, you're a rock, pebble, stone. And upon this Petra, boulder, I will build my church. What's it built on? Revelation. The revelation, the supernatural revelation of Jesus being the Christ. It is not built on Peter. It is built on the revelation, a divine supernatural revelation that Jesus is the Christ because flesh and blood can't reveal it to you. It had to come supernaturally. Well, how does that take place? We preach the gospel. God then takes, uh, remember um, uh, the uh, two disciples on the road um, to wherever and Jesus appeared to them after the resurrection? And um, it said, did our hearts not burn within us as he revealed the scripture to us? You see, we preach the gospel, the Holy Ghost comes and brings revelation. It's not my job to make you believe it. It's not my job to get enough archaeological evidence that would convince you what? Your sense knowledge. You know, the Shroud of Turin. How many of you have ever seen the, uh, the documentary on the Shroud of Turin? You know, very interesting. I mean, and if, if it really was the Shroud of Turin, it'd be really cool. Okay? You know, the carbon dating and the, and the image on it and all that. I think, well, that would that's all be really cool, but it wouldn't mean nothing. Because that's not enough to get you. All that would say is 